Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and unfortunately today I've got a confession to make. Now over the past few months where I've been frantically browsing the classifieds for my next car I've begun to fall in love with something that I really shouldn't. Back in 2003 on Top Gear Jeremy Clarkson once said that he would rather walk back to the studio hundreds and hundreds of miles away than drive another mile in the Porsche Cayenne. It has the sex appeal of a camel with gingivitis and frankly I would rather walk back to the studio than drive another yard in it. Now this had absolutely nothing to do with how the car drove but everything to do with how it looked. However, now in 2022, I think that the original Porsche Cayenne is simply stunning. This particular one is in a blue colour, which you don't see very often, and actually is the entry level 4.5S. Actually, later on, they did bring a 3.2 V6 out, but this was the entry level V8 in 2003 when this car was launched. And although it's on these small sort of rims which is not what you'd normally see i think it just gives it such an elegance and a classy look which means it does not look out of place in this beautiful village or wherever this place is when this car was released it was porsche's first suv and lots of people obviously hated the idea of that and the much boxier and more purposeful looking l322 range rover which i still think is probably taking the biscuit on this was just released and so this came out they tried to make it look a bit like a 911 or a Boxster at the front didn't really work, but now it has really come into its own. So although I can see why formerly people thought it was ugly, I would disagree with that sentiment now. And actually I was one of those people that thought it was ugly previously, but times change and uh, my opinion certainly has as well. Do you guys think this is ugly or do you think it's gorgeous? So now you know why I love the way that this thing looks, let's see if the same thing can be said for the way in which it drives. So as I said, this is a KNS, it's a 4.5 litre V8, but don't be fooled, it only produces around 340 horsepower, which is around the same as what BMW's 3.2 litre S54 was producing at the same time. And of course, this being a 4x4, it's very heavy, over two tons in this KM. So this 4.5S isn't particularly a rocket. Now what I have heard that if you go for a turbo variant of this 4.5 engine, which is 450 horsepower, or you can even get a Turbo S, which is a mind boggling 520 horsepower, they are indeed rockets. But this still, you put the foot down at 40 miles an hour, up a hill, there's 60 as we change into fourth gear and it picks up really really nicely now christian at heel and toe cars whose car this is and where it is currently advertised for sale did ask me to just give it a little of beans on these country roads because he seems to think that this is essentially a jacked up boxster now having owned a boxster for almost a year and recently have sold that i feel like i've got a pretty good idea of how that feels dynamically and so I'm gonna take Christian's advice. I'm gonna pop it across here into manual mode. I've got the Tiptronic buttons where I can select the gears. Let's go down into third gear. That's always a nice starting point. 35 miles an hour. I'm just gonna gently thread it around these corners and see how it feels. Up into fourth. And that Tiptronic system, you know, you can tell it's old, but it still changes nicely. It does what you want when you ask it to. And they're in a nice place, actually. It does feel like you can engage with the gearbox as you're pushing on. 60 miles an hour, then we've got to brake a little bit. I'm gonna downshift into third. Brakes feel really confident, actually. Really nice feel to those. And if we push it around this corner a little bit faster than you might want to go. Surprisingly, what I felt there is the steering was really well judged midway through that corner, nice and light and pretty responsive, way more responsive than a Range Rover, but even more responsive than you would expect this thing to be. So initial impressions then, you can tell that this car is around 20 years old, not because it's bad, 
But compared to like a modern day Audi, for example, an Audi SQ5 that I've driven or an SQ7, they're much sharper, they feel lighter and they're more poignant. But for a 20-year-old car that can be had for well under 5,000 pounds, this feels surprisingly sharp. And I'll let you into a secret, I would much rather drive one of these cars than one of those aforementioned newer Audis. Although at the time when this car was released, it was Porsche's first SUV and arguably their first sort of family or boring or sensible car, it's got a real sense of character in here. You're instantly aware of the fact that you're driving a Porsche because if you've had any experience in any sort of Porsche before, these dials would be immediately familiar to you. Gorgeous that they are. We've got a battery voltage dial over there, speedometer, a central sort of gauge with a digital display, fuel counter, which is going down surprisingly quickly, and temperature, big tachometer or rev counter on the left, and oil temperature. You've got everything you need in front of you, which is fundamentally and inherently Porsche. Yet then it's so confusing because it's juxtaposed with this incredibly high driving position. It does remind me a lot of my previous Range Rovers. But then what doesn't remind me of the Range Rovers is the way that it just goes round corners. It's really quite impressive. When you're driving around town, the steering's a little bit lethargic, quite heavy, a little bit heavier than I would like perhaps. But as soon as you go round a corner at any sort of speed, it does wake up a little bit and comes alive to a certain extent. I'm going down speeds this road, and admittedly it's about the speed limit at 60. I would never get anywhere near this in the Range Rover, and the Range Rover's not a car you really want to drive like that, or at least not a standard diesel model. But this, I'm having a lot of fun pushing on, but I've also been really enjoying wafting around and sitting back in these gorgeous, beautiful seats, actually. They're really, really comfortable. Proper, proper leather in these and we've got five different levels of heated seat available. And when you get to number five, your ass is quite literally on fire. So let's get it down into second gear, do a nice little pull here. We're at about 30 miles an hour, and this time we're on the flat. And I'm just gonna slowly plant the throttle as we go to this straight here. We go all the way up to the six and a half thousand RPM red line at 60 miles an hour. And that is a really, really wonderful way to propel yourself along the road. Oh, that sound as well. I really love this driving position. I thought, yeah, this KN's gonna be dynamically quite good, but the driving position's gonna sort of suffer for it. It's not going to feel like a big SUV, which I quite like, and it does. It still feels like I've got a sort of command position on the road. I absolutely adore these huge wing mirrors either side of my head. They're brilliant, absolutely gargantuan. And of course, this bit of KN, I've got not only my two visors, I can pop one over there and then do this, Really good, got that, just like I would in my Range Rover, but I've also got this auxiliary one here for when the sun just happens to be in that tiny little three degree portion of the sky. I don't know why they did that, but I love the fact that they did. Also a quirky feature on this car, you did see it on some models from around the time, are the parking sensors. Now, there's no camera, and it does have front and rear sensors, but it's in the form of these lights, some at the front and some at the back, which are positions that I can see them in my rear view mirror. I'll demonstrate for you now. The view over the bonnet is pretty similar to what my Boxster's was. Although we're half a meter higher than you would be in that, you've got the haunches over the wheel arches there, which pretty much look exactly the same. And another thing that has pleasantly surprised me with this Cayenne is the ride quality, I think, is absolutely superb. Now, of course, it's gonna vary from car to car. I know that the turbos as standard came with the more sophisticated sort of air suspension system with lots of configurability. This is a more frugally specced early KNS model. But even so, the ride is just super, super lovely. It's a really nice balance between firm and soft. Now, the only thing I won't have done today is some sort of motorway mileage at 70 miles an hour, but cruising down these B roads at the national speed limit, which is 60, 
it rides the bumps really, really well. It doesn't feel particularly sharp or firm. And then again, when you sort of throw it into corners, it seems to just stiffen up a little bit or certainly be set up in a way that at those higher speeds, it gives you a bit of confidence. But yeah, I mean, pottering around now, it's really quiet and it's pretty soft. Okay, well, we should probably do a little bit on practicality because I realize some of you watching this video might actually want to know about that. So, it's not a huge car, but it is still quite big and you may be a little bit disappointed about the room in the back because it's not exactly huge in the back here, but you can fit five adults in fine. That's my knee room and I'm about four foot six. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. You can get three adults in the back, but it's not exactly like a Range Rover, for example. It's not quite as spacious as that. And it does feel very much more sort of cocooned in, which is kind of cozy, but also maybe not quite as luxurious or comfortable. And then moving back to the boots, there you go. And what most of you will probably know about these Porsches is they have a split tailgate, but not the same as sort of a Range Rover. I keep, I can't literally get away from Range Rovers. If you do this, you can open up this glass section. So, so if you just got your shopping bags, you want to just pop something in the back, that's the nicest way to do it. But it's potentially at the cost of your life if you're not careful. So I love it. I think it's just a super well, I, like, I actually really like this sort of metal scuff plate as well. Proper purposeful exhaust at the back. This, I believe to be rear lights from a later model. These are not original lights on this actual car. This is a 2003 car and this would have had the more sort of plain without these white bits on the back, which I really, I prefer the older ones to be honest. But yeah, practicality wise, I mean, that's it really, isn't it? Should we look at the engine as well? Let's do that. So, engine bay, see if we can open it. Oh, and this car, I have to say, in and out, mint. That's what I love, that's what, I mean, to be honest, I'm not gonna go on about it, but the heel and toe uh, car's Instagram page, I've been following for a little while now, and everything that comes up on there, it's not only mint, but it's in the most glorious specifications, like this KM, for example. You just don't see them, A, in this color, with that interior and this unmolested and gorgeously looked after. Look at that engine. That is a beautiful engine. That is absolutely beautiful. And I'll be totally honest with you. I desperately want one of these. I think I really have fallen for the Cayenne. I've been looking at turbos and I think I would want to go for a turbo. This, although is quite powerful, I think that turbo is a real sweet spot, 450 brake horsepower and a few more toys, things such as an Alcantara headlining as standard. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna be looking at the classifieds when I get home for more KN stuff. And it's a shame that I'm not driving this one home with me because I would actually be very, very tempted. So with all of that said then, I'm gonna say a big thank you to Christian at Heel & Toe Cars for allowing me to come down and sample this fine example of a KN today. Now, as I said at the start of the video, I have been lusting after these things for a little while now, and this has definitely lived up to my expectations. I already thought that this thing was gonna be really good, but it, it really is good. And now that I think, personally, they've come into their own in terms of styling, I think I might have to buy one. Just the small case of actually raising the money to buy one, but as soon as I have that money, I think I might just have to get myself a Cayenne. It's definitely an itch I need to scratch. Now, comment below if you have any thoughts or opinions on my opinion. Do you think I've completely gone bonkers and this looks like a big toe, or do you agree with my sentiment? But also, if you're gonna make a nasty comment, make sure you've actually driven this car, because I don't want you saying it's terrible when you've literally driven a Prius and nothing else, because that does happen more than you'd like to know. Anyway. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found it somewhat helpful and insightful. And yeah, if you haven't driven one of these KNs, then you should definitely go out and drive one because I think you might just be a little bit surprised and pleasantly at that. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon.